the President of the United States. She'll make the case tonight. She'll reintroduce herself to the nation as to why she believes. I'm the biggest Kamala hater in the country by far. No, that's a little bit too strong. I'm not the biggest hater. I'm sure there's people who hate Kamala Harris more than I do. In fact, I don't hate her at all. I've definitely been someone who did not like her at all. And that is me as a Jamaican. I'm a Jamaican, Jamaican-American. So we share that. And my skin is brown. So even with that being said, never really liked her at all whatsoever i looked at her as fake an empty vessel just going with the wind um hillary clinton hot sauce right a panderer right a jellyfish just going with the current she kept trying to be cool and trying to sort of pander uh culturally you know she would come up with some some line you know well you know this is america and we ain't gonna do none that nobody told us to do because it be that, you know what I mean? She'll be on that. And we got a little t little taste of that in Atlanta, in ATL. Um, but here's, here's what's been happening lately. This run. Didn't like her first run for president. Didn't particularly like her as vice president, but more her being invisible, which might be by design. And I don't mean by her design either. But I didn't really see her. Didn't really, you know, she was kind of shadow and, you know, Anytime you see her, she's done some, yeah, that, 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 you know, whatever, just trying to do, do that thing. Um, however, this presidential run, wow. Wow. Has Kamala Harris converted me to be one of her biggest fans in 2024? Well, I can say this much. Lately, I keep looking at her, listening to her, and I keep thinking to myself, what changed? It just has a different feel to it. She sounds different. I keep thinking to myself, why is it again that you don't like her? What was it that rubbed you wrong about her? I mean, and it's very clear in my mind, it was generally her being fake and uh, not standing for anything. But I'm listening to her and I'm like, is this how she sounded back then when I got the negative vibes that I'm not getting so much now? What changed? Is she the same and somehow I'm reacting differently? Or did she change and I'm adjusting based on what I see before me? Um, her speeches are much better. She even did an interview. You know, people who, people who are just doing outreach content won't, won't tell you that. But, or they'll talk about it, but then it's like, oh, she didn't really answer questions. But she, she, she did an interview with some news person, asked her a question. And she delivered an intelligent answer. You know, she didn't sound crazy. She didn't, oh, and Trump this and Trump that. And, and the Republicans, they're racist and they're, they're ruining our country. No, she didn't do that. She was, she was on policy. No, no, this is how we're going to do it. This will happen. And we got to remember that. I'm like, okay, she sounded competent. And she sounded, whoop. She sounded competent and, um, dare I say, presidential. I listened to her speech, her big speech on Thursday night. Didn't listen to the whole thing yet. But from what I heard, she was delivering. Unlike Trump, she knows how to speak. Trump, even with a teleprompter, somehow struggles. And maybe that's because he goes off script or 
you know, his reading comprehension. I don't know what it is, but even with teleprompter, Trump is just his energy and what he's saying. And, you know, look at the end of Kamala's speech. God bless the United States of America. Not God bless her. You know what I mean? Like, she's not slurring her words. She's not doing nothing crazy. And although a conservative would hyper focus on any attacks on Trump, man, those are few and far between. Trump's whole speech is about the left and they're ruining this country and, and look what's happening. And there's a disaster. This, this country's crumbling and this and that. And they, they want to they wanna, they wanna, uh, uh, take the babies in the first week. You know, his whole thing is attacking them, right? A majority of what I've been hearing from the Democrats during the Democratic convention and during Kamala, Kamala's compl uh, complaint campaign is, you know, this is what we're going to do. You know, um, this is a great country, but it could be better. We want to make it better. The prices are too high. This is how I want to address this. This is the policy I want to do. This is the way we should do it. This is what needs to change. This is what's happening that's hurting the American people, right? And then here and there, and Trump wants to take us back, right? But we're not going back, right? Because we're going to add this change and make this policy change. The Republican Party stands for nothing, but we stand for change. And these are not actual words. I'm not quoting, but I'm just saying that's the style. Majority, overwhelming majority is policy you know, recognizing the issues in the country, but it's not this doom. They're not, they're not saying, you know, the country's on fire. No, she's saying the prices are too goddamn high. <laughs> you know what I mean? Prices are too goddamn high. That's what she's saying. What's Trump saying? What's his, you know, uh, statements about how the country's doing? Oh, it's falling apart. It's going to collapse and America's going to go away. And if we don't win, we're not going to have a country and, and, and it's, it's a disaster and everything is this and that. And, and da, 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 da. you know, it's like fire and brimstone. Basically, Trump describes America as hell. Right. And certainly America is hell for certain people. But those are, this is a very, very small group of people. That's not to say, let me, let me clarify, because I know people, people are just so disingenuous. They're going to try to say that it's not a small group of people that, that, that are living hell. There's a lot of people that are having a lot of issues. I am having a lot of issues myself. Right. But when we talk about hell, right, the fire and brimstone that Trump's talking about, that's a very small group of people that are in that type of situation. Because to me, in hell is you're homeless. In hell is you're about to lose your home because of medical debt. In hell is dying in a hospital and insurance is not even covering everything. In hell is six people living in a one bedroom apartment, two bedroom apartment, and you're going through a nasty divorce and, you know, um, your house has been broken into five times in the last month you know what i'm saying like your, your family's falling about that that's hell you know people that are just struggling financially um you know like myself for a time where you know uh watching my credit go down and 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 paying my mortgage you know uh, a month late um you know what i mean having to cut back on things that's not hell it's tough it's challenging but that's not hell but regardless where's my position on kamala now well based on her presentation, based on, you know, not just the speech, I'm just saying everything I've seen of her since she started this campaign um, is impressive. The stuff she's saying is impressive. She sounds impressive. She doesn't sound as fake and just floating with the river. She seems to have, and this is the thing about partisan politics, right, and partisan media. I think I was the only one who immediately recognized that Kamala had policies that she was running on. I recognized it right away because she said it right away. She ran around the country talking about what she wanted to do as far as policy-wise. But let the rest of the media tell it. Independent left, independent right, mainstream liberal, mainstream conservative. She was just going out there on vibes. It's all vibes, vibes, vibes. Definitely breaking points, right? The Young Turks even. Vibes, it's all vibes. Oh, we're going we're gonna to hear her policies finally at the convention. No, she's been saying her policies all over the country. And I didn't see anyone. I, did, I saw a lot of media talk, talking about it. I watched a lot of videos. I'm very much into politics, very much into media analysis. I've been watching all these channels, and they keep saying it. She's not running anything, not running anything. Sounding like me. It's not like me, how I used to look at her. She doesn't run, she's not on, on anything. She's just on vibes and trying to be pandering, whatever. But no, she's been going around the country talking about prices too goddamn high. We got to go after price gouging. We got to we gotta deal with the, uh, healthcare. We got to build more homes. She's been saying it. The only thing that changed is she finally released her official policy where she has dollar amounts and figures and how many homes she wants to purchase and blah, 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 blah. But the general you know, principles, what she's been running on, she's been saying it. And that is how bad things are in this country, that we don't even have any media, regardless of independent, left, right, all of them. All of them have been doing this. I'm sure there's some exception. But overwhelmingly, everyone did, you know, ignored what she was saying. Now, either it was dishonest, some of it's dishonest, I'm sure, or just laziness. Did they actually listen to her speeches or listen to any of her rallies? I didn't watch any of her entire rallies, but I listened to her speak, and I heard her say these things. Did no one else, did Young Turks didn't listen to any of her rallies? I know Fox didn't. Right. Well, they probably did looking for her to say something crazy. Um, you know, MSNBC didn't didn't watch it. The CNN folks didn't watch it. Anyway, here's where I stand. If I trusted Kamala, which I don't. I would say she is about to be one of the greatest presidents that we've ever had. If I trusted her 
And she was capable, politically, of delivering. Now, I... Let's say I do trust her. I don't. Let's say I do trust her. In terms of what she's saying. Then, again, looks to be one of the greatest presidents that we're going to have. A historical presidency. If I trust her. However, the problem with that is... Me trusting her that she means what she says and she's actually going to do these things or try to do these things is has limited meaning in terms of, in the scope of her ability to deliver, right? I have believed that she's a horrible politician, right? I, my analogy I always give is like trying to have an engineer promote themselves. You want the business people, the sales people to promote the engineers. Like you have a technical company. You don't want your engineers out there. I mean, there's such a thing as sales engineers. So that's a little hybrid role. But a true engineer typically isn't going to have the skill set. They'll be very knowledgeable, very skilled. And they can, they can build great things and design great things. But you don't want them to be the face of the company, right? Um, they don't, a lot of them have the, the, the social skills to really uh, communicate effectively um, in, in that arena. That's how I look at, uh, at Kamala. Uh, when, I, when I look at her actual record in terms of attorney general and things like that, I don't see her going into court and flip-flopping and just like, oh, okay, judge, or whatever. No, I see her going in there, you know, prepared and makes her arguments and able to win, right? So she's got the skill set. She's not, she's not uh, uh, unqualified in that arena. But as a politician, it's just like in the military. So I'm a veteran, and I'll tell you, you look at a general. A general becomes more of a political role, right? When you get to that level, things get more political, right? At a lower level. It is more operational, right? But at that level, it's a different. So what, what that means is a general needs to have a certain level of charisma, uh, a, a ability to lead uh, more so than the lower level leaders in terms of, you know, you've got to convince uh, others and, you know, oh, you know, set the tone for the for the military that you're you're a general of, the branch that you're a general of, and, and push things along. And that's a different level, man. Go up and do a speech and convince people and get people energized. Yes, there's some of that at lower levels for sure, but at a general, it's just on a higher level. And to me, that's what happens with, with, with being a president. So you can be very technical. You know all the stuff about government. You know how government works. You have great policy ideas. But that has limited use to you when you need to speak to Congress or you need to address the nation and you – that's a different skill set, being able to identify the right way to say what you want to say and, and how to appeal to the voters, how to appeal to Congress in terms of Congress wants to go in one direction, right? And you have limited power as just the president. You want to change the direction that Congress goes. You know, how do you, you know, de develop relationships with pe members of Congress, allegiances? You know, I scratch your back, you scratch mine, right? I know this bill is very important to you. I'm going to help you get that bill passed. But if I support you on your bill, which I agree with, but I'm going to put extra effort to support that bill, you need to support me on a change of position with something else, right? You know, the partnership, you know, that's the thing, leadership, right? I'm not just, I'm not just going to tell everybody what to do. This is what we're going to do. And this is what No, no, no. It's leadership, man. You got to be compelling and convince people. And you need to be perceived as someone who's sure of yourself. You stand for something. You have a spine. You have a serious agenda you're pushing for. And people will rally around you and support that agenda. I don't see her previously as being that person, as having those abilities. So that would compromise if she's being honest. So if she's being honest, this is what would happen. She gets in the office and actually generally tries to do these things. And this would be my expectation because I'm starting to lead to by her picking Tim Walls that she, there might be some level of genuine, you know, her being genuine, you know, maybe she's matured, maybe she's changed to a new person. I definitely would be skeptical, 100%. I would never, you know, at this point, you gotta, you gotta deliver, right? I will never at this point be like, you know what? I'm convinced now. No, no, no. But I could lean to and have the opinion of, you know, maybe she is. Don't trust her, but I'm leaning in that direction. But the problem is I see her get in office, potentially trying these things, and then, you know, she gets tremendous pressure from people that are, you know, backed by all these lobbyists. I mean, she has people that didn't, didn't donate to her campaign going to be in her ear. A lot of people going to be in her ear, and they're going to scare her and like, you can't do this. You're going to destroy the, destroy the economy, and then, you know, that's going to be on you, your legacy, and blah, 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 right? And they're going to just get in her face and da, 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 da. Listen, let me tell you an example of what I'm talking about. Look at how she started her speech. This is a prime example of what I'm talking about, that even if she is genuine, I don't know if she has the ability to actually deliver. Now, regardless of all I'm saying, you got to vote for her, all <laughs> right? And not vote blue no matter who, right? Um, if we had a normal Republican, right, just a normal Republican with conservative values, whatever, then it's kind of like, do what you like, right? But with Trump on the ballot and, and, and Trumpism and, and MAGA, whatever, uh, you got to vote for Kamala, right? But... Voting for Kamala, but actually voting against Trump, um, that's one thing. But here's another thing. So at the beginning of the speech, she was getting so much applause. And she did her, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone, good evening, good evening. Failure to control the crowd. 
Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, I've done public speaking, but nothing close to what she's doing, right? I understand. It's it's an awkward thing. People are loving you, and do you wanna do you want uh do you wanna rain on the parade? Like everyone's excited, yeah, and you're like, okay, guys, we gotta do work. You know, you wanna let them do their thing. Let them be happy. Let them be joyful. Let them celebrate what in the moment or whatever. But in the same token, as a leader, that's the thing about leader. You gotta make tough decisions, right? So there's a middle ground between letting them have their time, and then getting to the point where okay, now we need to get down to business. Also. She could she could have taken command and, and and don't get me wrong I realize this is hindsight is twenty twenty right but that's the thing about great leadership that's the thing about a great politician is ability to think on your feet right and that's what I'm saying she doesn't have that skill set great politicians they will figure this stuff out on the spot like for example for example Trump not a great politician uh, let's leave that alone not uh, it, it, Trump's great thing is he's really great in terms of as a reality TV star so what people are looking at as him being heroic with his pumping his fist after the assassination attempt that is tv trump right he heard that everything was safe they killed a shooter so he's in the clear plus he has all these you know secret service around him right it's kind of difficult to make a headshot from really far you want to you know try to do a body shot right but he's got all these people around him so the risk is relatively low and he heard that you know they, the shooter is down so now he goes instantly into tv mode i got I got i gotta get a good shot i gotta get a good line in fight you know whatever that's tv guy he's really good at that right so in the same way that he's good at that a good politician can seize the moment and think of stuff that I'm thinking about in the moment, not 2020 hindsight, but in the moment. So what you do, you take command, you realize these things are going on too long, you make an assessment of how long to let it go on, you you figure out a great way to wind things down, but another thing you can do is you can you can take over the energy, right? As a leader, you're gonna leave, you're gonna lead, lead. So the crowd is doing their thing, don't let them run wild, right? right? Take command, how do you take command? While they're going, yeah! She goes, when we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. And what are we going to do on December 1st? Everybody's going to. Right? Or some kind of chant, right? But she's not that type. She's not that type. She didn't have the skill set. Now, I got to recognize, I, I'll give her credit. I mean, this is kind of whirlwind. I mean, she didn't expect to run for president. This is very, very new. And the campaign has been exploding. Everything's been exploding. This is crazy. Now she's making a speech at the DNC. So maybe she's overwhelmed, whatever. Um, even a great politician, they're human. Maybe it's a bit much. But still. I still like to use that as an example of what I'm talking about. You know, is she going to, as president, allow certain things to run wild and other energies to be powerful and, and, and taking control? Or is she going to have the, the ability to put her foot down and say, no, 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 guys, 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 this is what's happening, right? And I'm talking about dictator like she's telling you whatever, whatever, but she's the one running the show. I'm going to hear your point of view. I'm going to be respectful to you. I'm going to steel man your argument, but I'm going to also not let you run the show. I am the leader, Right. I am the, the democratically elected leader, and I am running this meeting. I am running this agenda. I do have to respect your points of view, and I can't just have it my way or the highway, but ultimately, I'm setting the tone, and I'm steering the ship, right? Um, can she do that? I don't know, man. I'm really skeptical. But I'm definitely not a fan of her yet. We'll see. I'm a fan of her campaign. Her campaign is awesome, what she's been doing so far. I'm a, I'm a fan of what she's been doing. I'm a fan of what she's been saying. But I don't know if these are, you know, she spoke empty words emptily previously. Is she now speaking empty words in a way that makes it sound credible, right? So imagine I'm lying to you. Well, what happened was uh, um, I, uh, I, I actually, I was actually there on time, but nobody saw me, you know, telling the same lie, right? Oh, no, 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 no. I was actually here early. And then um, I was actually on my phone talking to my wife, da, 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 da. Right? I'm still lying, right? But a little bit more convincing this time. So is she the same person as she was before in terms of substance? But her performative nature, the thing that I thought that was weakest about her, is part of politics is being performative. You've got to motivate people. You've got to energize people. You've got to have a persona that gets people energized, right? I mean, you should have a spine behind it and it should have substance behind it. But regardless of that piece, you do need to have the presentation piece. So I think maybe she's got that presentation piece. It's not perfect. She's going to need to work on it, but she's got a pretty solid presentation piece, which can potentially now hide the lack of substance that I feel was there before. So lack of substance might be the same, but presentation might be greatly improved. The only way to know whether it's not just presentation improvement, it's also substance improvement, is if she wins and then she actually delivers. And delivering is going to mean, like she said, when we fight, we win. She's going to need to fight. She's going to need to fight for these things, right? Because if you're doing stuff to help the regular people, that's going to be corporate interest, right? Which the Republican Party is going to be a big part of that. And also the Democratic Party, corporate Democrats are going to gonna put so much pressure on her. And she's new at this. This is the first time being a president. This is a big move for her. I mean, she was vice president, so I guess technically. But still, you know, people going to be like, you don't know what you're doing. We've been, we've been doing this for a long time and blah, blah, blah. I don't know, man. Um, I'm not convinced. But I, I will say she's gotten me intrigued. She's gotten me intrigued. 
I'm going to keep listening. I'm going to keep watching and see where things goes. But no, not a Kamala fan. But I think I can perhaps formally drop the label of being a Kamala hater. I mean, hater is like childish, but whatever. Um, I would say I've moved from solidly not liking her to undecided. She's moved me. She's absolutely moved me. Super skeptical. I don't expect much from her. Again, I, I believe even if she's being honest, I don't think she has the skill set to actually deliver because she's going to be fighting against a massive machine. Um, she certainly would do way better um, than Donald Trump. I mean, most people would. Um, but I think, um, yeah, I'm not a fan, but I'm undecided. I don't think, I, I think I no longer uh, despise her. So there's that. I wonder how many people were undecided on her, didn't despise her like me, undecided on her who now love her. I think a lot, right? If they could move me, right? What is it? What, what, what for people that were closer to her? I was far away from her. Now I'm in the middle, right? Will I become a fan? Talk to me in year, actually, we don't need to wait the year or two, year one. I'm going to know right away. The first six months, biggest indication of what's up, right? In terms of what she says, what she was saying before and what she's not saying then or still saying then. But after 12 months, I'm going to let you know whether she's the real deal or not. Anyway, this is the Baby Channel, the Baby Income section below. Click on the like button, subscribe, and that bell. Be well, and I'm out.